Today, I want to talk about three challenges that I faced on my North American campus. The obstacles that I faced are faced by Jews who explicitly affiliate with their Jewish identity. There are questions asked by Zionists, real young Zionists who want to have a complex relationship with Israel. And these issues cut to the heart of the eternal Jewish question. How do we balance sensitivity to the individual while strengthening the collective? Today's panel is called The Campus as a Crossroads in the Life of a Young Jew. I want to start by mentioning the roads that crossed as I entered Cornell. My Jewish identity was deeply influenced by three individuals. My father, a Sofer Stam or Jewish calligrapher. My mother, a physicist's daughter who had an adult bat mitzvah. And Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel, the namesake of my pluralistic Jewish high school in New York City. These three figures grounded my Jewish identity in three pillars. Jewish values, tradition, and intellectualism. The first of the three challenges that arose for me was reconciling this strong personal background in Judaism with the dominant Judaism of the community at Cornell. In my lower and high school education, I was surrounded by young people who were committed to Judaism, but who didn't always express that commitment through traditional Jewish practices. When I arrived at Cornell, I found that the young Jews committed to Judaism tended to be committed to practicing Orthodox Judaism. This caused a mini-crisis in my Jewish confidence. Growing up, I loved saying Kiddush at my family's Shabbat dinner table. But sitting in Cornell's kosher dining hall each Friday night, I was afraid to even say motzi. Would I be violating the orthodox prohibition against women, women, women singing in public? In short, I had 18 years of Jewish theory under my belt, but I was too afraid to put it into public practice. I want to be clear. The community at Cornell was friendly and inviting. But this new, primarily orthodox community forced me to ask myself difficult questions. How much did I value Jewish observance? Were these desires to become more observant coming from myself or my desire to be a part of a community? The second challenge arose from this lack of confidence in my own Jewish identity. Chala for hunger allowed me to need out the questions I had surrounding my own Judaism. <laughs> Instead of stressing over how much I wanted to keep kosher, I stressed over how many flavors of challah we would make. On the surface, this isn't a challenge. There's nothing wrong with focusing on the rich Jewish tradition of pursuing justice. But I was using this as an outlet to escape the question surrounding my observance. My ideal Jewish identity is one of balance, balance between particular Jewish practices and Jewish universal values, and a balance between Jewish peoplehood and global citizenship. I couldn't find that balance. The third challenge I faced also involved balanced, balanced conversation, or lack thereof, on Israel. The dominant Israel organizations at Cornell were focused on Hasbara. Unlike Mr. Sharansky articulated, I would never feel that I would be better off if there wasn't an Israel, or uh, if Israel didn't exist. And in many feel, ways, I feel like the initiatives that he instigated um, were so successful as to, in some ways, alienate individuals like myself. Um, I understood the importance of disabusing misinformation about Israel on campus and abroad, but I found it frustrating to encounter what I felt like was one monolithic opinion about Israel within the Jewish community on campus. One of the things that's kept me coming back to Judaism in the, is the high intellectual standard to which our tradition holds. The language that I'd employed in my Jewish life for so long, a language rich in logical maneuvers and analytical devices, seemed foreign in the university's Israel-related Jewish context. I also experienced alienation from the Israel dialogue on the left, as many young American Jews as, um, felt, as Professor Yudoff articulated. Um, I heard shouts of apartheid and attacks on Zionism. But because I felt uncomfortable within the Jewish community talking about Israel at Cornell, I didn't have the support that I needed to campaign against Israel's true detractors, and I disengaged from the Israel debate on campus. As I prepared to graduate, I knew that I needed to dedicate some of the experimental period in my life the continu continuing experimental period in Jewish sovereignty. Wanting a serious, long-term, and in-depth look at Israel, I looked through Massa's programs and found the Israel Government Fellows, which promised an immersive experience in the Israeli political environment. IGF adeptly placed me at the Shalom Hartman Institute on its iEngage project. The iEngage project is an initiative dedicated to bringing the troubled, committed Jewish community back into a productive conversation about Israel and world Jewry. Since coming to Hartman and IGF, I've seen enough of the marketplace of ideas about Israel to engage in debate. But only when I heard variety to the Israel rhetoric did I feel comfortable to put my guard down to talk about Israel, and I've become a much more confident Israel advocate because of it. 
Um, I've described three challenges here. One, about reconciling my Judaism with the Orthodox Judaism that I found on campus. Two, about ignoring questions of Jewish observance in favor of questions of Jewish globalism. And three, about feeling too paralyzed to talk about Israel. As I think is clear, I've overcome many of these challenges in my personal identity. And I don't want these challenges to distort the fact that I had a rich and meaningful Jewish existence on campus. But I hope these challenges have so showcased room for opportunity and engagement and improvement. As Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel said, new insight begins when satisfaction comes to an end.